starts off as a simple block of clay. When put into fire, it turns hard like rock. This transformation has made brick a cornerstone of engineering for more than 9,000 years. Brick is virtually everywhere. No other building material is so central to our history. It gives rise to some of the most famous structures from antiquity, many of which still stand in defiance of time. It's mind-boggling in one respect because it's hard to realize that something can last that long. When we pick up a brick and we think of how to use it in a modern building, it is automatically linked to the history of brick architecture and the history of city making. Today, brick continues to meet crucial engineering needs. From the strength for everyday structures, driveways, chimneys, homes, to the exterior skin of stadiums and skyscrapers. More than 9,000 years after its creation, brick remains an essential material in construction. I mean, it's an incredible material, brick, and, and I never cease being fascinated by it. Uh, I never cease to being amazed at what is done with it. Strong, resistant to the elements, virtually fireproof, brick is prized for its attributes. But brick construction also has a central weakness, mortar. Brick walls need an adhesive agent to bind the blocks together. Without mortar, a wall is nothing more than a collection of bricks stacked precariously on top of each other. Brick and mortar go together like bread and butter. You need mortar to lay bricks in because you can't, it's, it's difficult to lay them dry and they've no ability to stick together. So one uses mortar, which is uh, sand and cement or sand and lime, an adhesive almost, to keep the masonry units together. Mortar is the glue that holds bricks together, but it is also brick construction's greatest weakness. When brick structures encounter a strong force from the side, the mortar goes under stress. It can begin to crack. The bond with the brick can fail. Nowhere is this weakness more evident than in an earthquake. The swaying of the earth can cause mortar joints to fail. The results can be tragic. Many of the brick buildings built here in the United States are not reinforced or designed to sustain uh, seismic or earthquake loads. They don't like to be shaked around. They don't like to be moved. They don't like vibrations so much. It's not a matter of if, but it is when. If it's a major earthquake, most engineers and architects agree that some buildings will fail in some manner. Even with this inherent weakness, the demand for this ancient building block continues to grow. Each year, 10 billion bricks are produced in the United States alone. To meet the massive demand, most production is done in state-of-the-art factories. Inside plants like Redlands KF in South Windsor, Connecticut, nearly 50,000 bricks are produced each hour. While technology now drives production, the basic ingredient for creating brick has been the same for centuries. Clay. Clay is the soft, wet earth generally found under the first level of topsoil. It is available in virtually every corner of the world. Clay is the same material that gives shape to pottery. But that does not mean all bricks are the same. Select different clays that contain certain minerals, and bricks can be customized for specific traits of color, weight, or strength. The possibilities are vast. Looking for a material that can insulate a furnace? Mine a clay that has iron oxide and silica 
for maximum resistance to heat. Need a strong material for an industrial factory floor? Select a clay with aluminosilicates for compressive strength. Picking the right clay is a crucial step in brick making. Once mined from the earth, clay must be formed. For centuries, humans meticulously created bricks by hand. Today, machines called extruders shape clay. As it's formed, tiny air pockets are pressed out. The result is a block that is less porous. This is crucial. In that process of actually squeezing that clay out, they actually take the air out of the brick and then actually takes out the voids and makes the brick stronger and more water resistant. But to convert clay into brick, it must be fired. Heat is the crucial element that makes it rock hard. Inside these modern kilns, bricks bake at temperatures of at least 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. At this heat, a transformation takes place. The moisture content inside evaporates. Clay particles start to fuse on the molecular level. This bonding of particles is called vitrification. It turns soft earth into the solid, rock-hard, essential building tool we call brick. Brick are really good because they're little pieces of rock that are sintered, that is, they're actually heated to the point where the internal components of the clay mechanically bond through the thermal processes at elevated temperatures, ending up with this structurally intact brick. It is nothing short of magical. Firing bricks requires precision. Bake them too hot or for too long and the clay literally melts. Not hot enough or not long enough and you've got a fragile, brittle block. Useless. Modern kilns monitor each variation in temperature. This attention to quality ensures that each brick will be strong, durable and aesthetically pleasing. But in the beginning, there is only one kiln, the sun. Jericho, 7,000 BC. In this barren landscape, human history changes. Mud is given shape by human hands and set in the sun to dry. It becomes hard enough to support weight the ancient world relies on mud bricks to erect some of its first structures. Many people think that architecture begins with stone, but brick is the first material that makes permanent buildings. We started out with just mud brick, uh, where people just shaped the brick together uh, and laid it out in the sun, and that was enough for them. In a lot of those climates, that was perfectly fine. The remnants of one ancient achievement in mud bricks can still be seen. These ruins once formed a wall that stretched nearly 4,000 miles. It was the largest man-made structure on Earth. Much of its strength came from billions of mud bricks. This is the first Great Wall of China. Is a mind-boggling engineering achievement because of its first and foremost its scale, and I mean to cover thousands of miles with a single engineered structure is uh, unparalleled in human history. And this wall is built for one simple reason: protection. 221 B.C. China is under constant attack from tribes to the north. Emperor Shi Huangdi must protect his domain. The Chinese are farmers. They don't really have horses, so they're always vulnerable to mounted attack. 
And the way you stop a mounted attack is by putting up some sort of a barrier. The Emperor devises a plan to construct a series of walls that will stretch across China's northern border. In urban areas like modern-day Beijing, strong stone can be used. But how do you build a wall to run thousands of miles across remote stretches of mountains, deserts, and uninhabited lands? Moving heavy materials like stone is almost impossible. Engineers in China come up with a solution. Make the wall out of building materials available all across the empire. One material is available nearly everywhere. Mud. Engineers devise a unique plan. In the most remote regions of China, they will construct a series of interconnected barriers. The interior core will be fashioned out of rock, sand, and earth. Two rows of mud bricks are then added to each side of the exterior to give it strength and stability. In essence, the bricks act as a retaining wall, holding the barrier in place and shielding it from the elements. Nearly 700,000 people work on the project. After a 10-year effort, a system of interconnected walls stretches across China. But security is short-lived. This wall is not built to last. Rain, wind, and snow eat away at it. Because these bricks are not fired, particles inside don't fuse together. Moisture seeps into the mud, the bricks expand and fall apart. Mud bricks aren't fired, so they get degraded by rain and water. Many mud brick sections of the largest structure in the world lay in ruins. To recreate the wall, China must turn to a new kind of brick to be their protector. The Great Wall of China. It stretches nearly 4,000 miles. It cuts a path through the heart of a nation. And the strength behind much of this structure, an estimated 3 billion bricks. But this epic barrier almost didn't stand at all. Centuries after it is first built, the wall begins to crumble to the ground. The mud bricks that give it strength are no match for the elements. The edges of the brick would slowly disintegrate, and then the whole thing would basically turn back into mud and go back into the earth where it came from. To build a new wall, China needs a stronger brick. They turn to a new material, clay. Less porous than mud, Clay bricks are more resistant to penetration by moisture. But sun-dried clay will not be enough. They turn to a crucial element, fire. For at least 3,000 years, the Chinese made pottery by firing it at high temperatures in kilns. They decide to employ the same technology to create brick. By firing the clay in kilns, they can heat it to nearly 2,000 degrees. This allows the molecules to fuse. The result is a hard block that is resistant to the elements and is also able to sustain tremendous weight. The Chinese have a formula to rebuild the wall. The leap here is looking for something much more permanent. What is strange is how long it takes for this step to be made. And it seems to take a very long time for it to occur to people to fire bricks, building material, rather than just bake them in the sun. To give the wall greater strength, the Chinese also focus on how to bind the bricks together. The choice of a strong and reliable mortar is essential. In the Great Wall, engineers select a formula of burnt lime and sticky rice gruel. The two components act like cement, sealing the bricks together. Locals dub it 